Uh, you are welcome to um, our probably our last lecture on the um, amplitudes of um, the amplitudes of the complex number. So here we want to look at the amplitudes of unity. In the previous lecture we looked at the cube roots, which is a special case of this, right? Uh, the cube roots of unity. So now we want to look at the amplitudes roots of unity. Unity again is one, right? So unity just means the complex number is the number one, which as we said we can write as one uh, multiplied by the cosine of zero plus i sine of zero. So the argument is zero, the modulus is one. Alright? Um, now so the general formula for finding the um the amplitudes, right? Uh, of any complex number, in this case, you know, is unity, so the modulus is one. So we're gonna have m of one cosine of the argument is zero plus two pi k all over n plus i sine into zero plus two pi k over n, right? So this you can rewrite as this is just one, so we are just left with cosine of this is zero, so two pi k over n plus i sine of two pi k over n. So if you like z k is equal to this where k will be zero, one, two, all the way to n minus one. Okay? So this formula will give us the n root of unity. Okay? So that is a um, the fact that this unity is what is special about it. So we have this. Say k equal to that. Good. And so all we want to do is learn some um, learn some interesting properties of about the nth root of, of unity. So note a few things here. That for instance, if k is equal to zero, we get um, we get z zero uh, if it just be equal to of course one, right? Cosine of zero is one, this is zero, so it's just one. Uh, if k is 1, you have z1 is equal to, of course, I'm just going to have cosine of 2 pi over n plus i sine of pi, sine of 2 pi over n, right? Uh, if k is equal to 2, I'll have z2 is equal to cosine of, I'm going to have 4 pi over n plus i sine of 4 pi, right? 4 pi over n. Okay? So, you notice that apart from this, well, we can keep going. Uh, this is 2. Apart from this, where the uh, argument is 0, for those for which the argument is not 0, um, the smallest is z1, which is equal to this, right? Z2, the argument is Z2 is basically twice the argument of this. If you go to the next one, you'll find that the argument of it is three times the argument of Z1, and so on. So you get a general property, general idea about um, the relationship between the arguments of subsequent ones and then Z1. Okay? So we find that the argument of Z2 is basically two times that of Z1 twice the argument of z1 and then the argument of z3 is three times the argument of z1 all right and you can keep going if I, if I try the other ones you will find that the argument of z um, n minus one will be n minus one times the argument of z1 so that is what is interesting about this and also note, note that if I square z1, okay, if I raise this to the power 2, by the Morris theorem, I can just take the 2 in here, and I'm going to have this guy. Alright, if I square z1, I'm going to have 2 multiplied by this, that is 4 pi over n, 4 pi over n, which is the same as z2. So z2 is actually z1 squared. If you go to z3, you'll find that z3 is equal to z1 raised to the power 3, and so on. So basically, the arguments here are sort of acting like uh, the log, the logarithm. So z1, from here, you see that z2 is actually equal to, take this up here, it's like z1 squared, z3 will be equal to z1 raised to the power 3, 
and so on, right? And z to the n minus 1 will be z1 to the power n minus 1. So there are some interesting properties when you're looking at the amplitude of the number 1, the unity, all right? And these are some of the interesting ones. So I'll just write down a few things, um, and then I'll use that to explain, to explain some of the uh, properties for, for this. And I will do an, an example to illustrate all these things. Okay? So we have, so we have this. Okay? So if, for instance, we have if, okay, so if, if the complex, we can find this in those as well. If the complex roots with the smallest positive, with the smallest positive, positive argument is denoted by W, then the other, the other complex roots, complex roots are given by W squared, W cubed, W to the n minus, minus 1. Okay? So what is interesting about the amplitude of unity is that all I need to get, I mean Z0 is 1, so that is, that is okay. Once I get Z1, I don't need to bother about the rest. Alright? Because the red the rest will just be the square of the um the um the z1 or if you like the w that is the complex with the smallest positive argument in this case our z1 all right so that is what is interesting about that so you get z0 if you have z1 you can just get the rest of the argument the, the rest of the complex complex roots okay of unity okay and also um the other thing is that uh, Z0, Z1, and so on, right? Z2, these guys form an N regular, they form an N sided, form an N sided, sided polygon, okay? Polygon. Polygon. That is why, that is why when you do Z0 plus Z1 plus Z2, all the way to z n minus one. This goes to zero. That we proved for um, the key root of unity. This is this is a more general case of that. In other words, if you add all the roots, it should go to um, it should go to zero. Okay. Also, the complex roots of unity occur in conjugate pairs, and you will see that when we do an example. All right. The complex roots of unity. Complex, the complex roots of unity also occur, occur, occur in uh, conjugate, conjugate pairs. All right. So we use um, we use uh, a simple example to illustrate most of these uh, most of these concepts, so that we we'll get a deeper understanding of. Uh, of them. So let me see. Okay, so let's do uh, an example. Find, find the fifth, find the fifth roots, roots of unity, of unity, and hence show that. Show that I uh, want to show that cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus cosine of 4 pi over 5 is equal to negative 1 over 2. Similar to what we proved before for, um, for I think the key group is also one of the one of the groups. So let's let's try to um, to do this and then we'll be, uh, we'll be done with uh, finding the Roots of a complex number. Okay? So, um, fifth roots of unity. So, basically, we can apply um, the formula that we just wrote down, right? The general thing is ZK, ZK is equal to cosine of 2 pi k 
root by k over n, n is 5 here, plus i sine of 2 pi k all over 5. Because we want the fifth root of unity, so we have that. Where k now will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we use this to find the, um, the um, fifth roots of unity. So when a is 0, of course, this 0 is the uh, easiest one. It's just 1, because this is 0, because 0 is 1. It's 0. Z1 will just be equal to uh, the plug in 1. So you're going to have cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus i sine of 2 pi over 5. Okay? And then z2 will be equal to plug in 2. You're going to have cosine of 4 pi all over 5 plus i sine of 4 pi over 5. So if we call this, this is what we're doing before. If we call this w, all right, note that the next one would be w squared. See that if I square this, I just have to multiply this by 2 and I get this. So this is actually w squared. See? The next one, z3, will be equal to cosine of uh, 2 pi, well, multiply by 3, that's 6 pi over 5, plus i sine of 6 pi over 5. Of course, this again is this one raised to the power 3, right? Because I multiply 3 by this, I get that, 3 by that. Okay, so this is w raised to the power 3. Which, note that we can also rewrite this in a different form. This is more than pi. So if I take 6 pi over 5 minus 2 pi, I'm going to have, let's say, 10. This is negative 4 pi over 5. So I can actually rewrite this as cosine of 4 pi over 5 minus i sine of 4 pi over 5. Okay? So that's why we say that there are roots of a in conjugate pairs. You see that this this is the conjugate of that. See? And then the last one, z4, will be equal to multiply by 4, and is equal sine of 8 pi over 5 plus i sine of 8 pi over 5. Again, this is z1 raised to the power 4. If I raise this to the power 4, I just multiply this by 4 and by 4 and get that. So this is actually this is the power 4, as we wrote before. And again, this you can rewrite. This is more than pi, so if I take a pi over 5 minus 2 pi, I'm going to have negative 2 pi over 5. So I can rewrite this as cosine of 2 pi over 5 minus i sine of 2 pi over 5. Again, this is the conjugate of that. So the okay in conjugate pairs. All right, and once you get z1, you can get the other ones by just squaring z1, as, as we see here. So this is an example of a general, generalization that we wrote down. Now let's finish off by proving this. This is, we want to show, we want to show that this is equal to this. Note that we said that if you add all the roots, you should go to what? Zero, it should equal zero. So we just have to add z0, z1, z2, z3. Z4, we call it 0 and see if we get that relation. Alright? So what do you get? Let me get rid of this. And then let's um, let's finish up with this. So this is what I want to prove. So I'm going to leave it for now. We are going to add, let's leave the one for now. Let's add, if we add these two, know that this guy here. Is the same as this, so this actually will cancel out this, all right? This will cancel out that. I'm not using this, I'm using that. Then you see how they cancel out. So they cancel out. This will add up to this, so that's twice of it. This will also add to this, and then we'll add the one, all right? So I'm going to have 2 cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus 2. Uh, the other one is a 4 cosine of 4 pi over 5 plus z naught is 1. All of this must equal to 0. So I can take the 1 to this side, over it by 2 as we did 